Now we want to talk about spectrums or spectra, which is actually the plural of spectrums. In the photoelectric effect, we look at two different kinds of spectrum, an emission spectrum and an absorption spectrum. So if you've all been lucky enough, you should have seen a rainbow and you know that a rainbow is when white light is split into all different colors. And this is called a continuous spectrum all the way red, orange, blue, yellow, yellow, green, blue, what, what, all the way up to indigo. These are all the colors that are contained inside white light. This is a continuous spectrum. When we look at the photoelectric effect, we end up with what is called an emission spectrum. If you take the incoming light and you split it up into its individual colors, you don't get this continuous array of colors, but you get these specific lines of color. So this is an emission spectrum and an absorption spectrum is when you had the whole spectrum and now all of a sudden there's little black lines in there where some of the light is missing. So we're going to go talk about this a little bit about how emission and absorption spectrums occur. So if we shine our white light in coming into a prism the light's got different frequencies and wavelengths. It's all bent slightly differently or refracted slightly differently as it moves through the prism. And when it hits the other side of the prism, it's refracted again as it moves into the different medium. So the prism breaks this white light up into a whole set of different colors or the continuous spectrum or the rainbow of the colors, okay? If we want to make a line emission spectrum, you get a gas and when we say a gas usually when we do this it's the gas of a single element like hydrogen helium neon sodium mercury so you get a little tube you fill it with the gas of an element and then you put a lot of energy into it and the gas is electrified it will glow and it will emit light okay but it will not emit light of a continuous spectrum it will produce light of certain certain colored lines okay and every element is unique and has a unique line emission spectrum. And every element is unique and has this unique line emission spectrum because of the Bohr theory of the atom, where you have specific energy levels inside the atom. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you have a little sample of helium and you electrify it, these are the colors you will get. These will be the colors of neon. So as you might know, if you've ever seen a neon light, Neon lights are heavy on the red. They're usually a nice pinky red color when we see them. So you can see here an example of what's going with this. If this is the Bohr theory of the atom and this is um, the different energy levels, okay, they, if you go further, you'll end up with these lovely equations. But for now, we're just looking at these different colors. If an electron were to jump from far out on the far outer shell all the way back to the lowest shell, you would get this violet color light. But if electron were to jump from the middle shell to the low shell, you would get this blue colored light. And if you were to jump from the second to the inside one, you would get this reddish colored light. Okay, and this is what it would look like when you looked at the light. Here's the red, here's the little um, cyan blue, and here's the violet blue. And this is because the energy of the photons is matching the difference in energy levels between the energy levels which, that the electrons fall through. So these energy levels are spaced all slightly differently depending on how many protons there are in the nucleus, how many shells the atoms got, how far apart are the shells like that. So all elements have got unique energy levels and unique line emission spectrum. When you heat up the element and then it gets excited and the electrons fall back, you will get these little line emission spectrums as the light is emitted. Now the first cousin to this is an absorption spectrum. So if you've got a nice cold bundle of a gas, okay, and you put the whole rainbow of light through it, the light is going to suck out, the gas, sorry, is going to suck some of the energy out of the light. And the energy that it sucks out is going to correspond to the different energy levels in the Bohr theory in the atom. So if you put a bubble of hydrogen, cold hydrogen gas, and you shine the whole rainbow of light through it, it will steal out these colors over here. 
which correspond to what would happen if you made hydrogen excited. These colors would come out of excited hydrogen. It would emit these colors. But if you put the full spectrum of light through cold hydrogen, it will suck out the energy of these colors and your light will come out the other side missing these specific lines. So the absorption spectrum and the emission spectrum, they match each other for the frequencies of the light that are either emitted or absorbed because it all depends on the structure of the atom. But this is when absorption spectrum is when you put the full spectrum through a cold gas and some of it is absorbed and emission is when you make the gas hot and then it gets excited and it emits the special colors of light. Okay, so it will always correspond to the structure of the atom. These are the different little energy levels of the atom. They often draw them as these straight lines as opposed to the circle of the atom. In the questions, they've usually got um, straight lines and the energy gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You remember when you draw Aufbau diagrams, the energy always increases the further away from the center of the atom. And the little jumps, see here has a purple jump, is this purple absorption. He has a blue jump, it's the blue one. He has the pale cyan blue over here and here is the red over there. So this red one is a small jump and the purple one is a big jump. So this is the shortcut picture of it. Okay, every element's got its own unique spectrum, but to get a continuous spectrum, you have white light going through a prism, you end up with the rainbow. If you have a hot gas and you put it through a prism or something that diffracts the light, you will see certain specific colors of light emitted. But if you have the bright light, giving you the white light, it goes through a cold gas and then you look at it, you will see some of the lines have been absorbed. They are now missing. Okay, if we look at the spectra in infrared, okay, infrared has got lower energy light, then you're only going to get the molecules to vibrate. And how much they vibrate depend on what kind of bonds you've got, the strength of them, how big the atoms are, are they heavy, are they light, and what shape is the molecule. Remember the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and polarities and molecules that have got a dipole moment in that. This is all related to what happens with infrared spectra. So with infrared spectra, only photons, certain photons are absorbed. It causes a vibration in the bonds. And only polar bonds, like in water, for example, can absorb infrared light. So you can get an infrared spectrum and it is related to um, like polar bonds, like in water. So what happens is the earth, when in light comes in, it then hits the earth and bounces back as infrared radiation. And this hits the ozone layer, which has got carbon dioxide and water. And as you may know, Carbon dioxide's got polar bonds, water's got polar bonds. This is not a polar molecule, but this is a polar molecule. But the bonds are in fact polar. And this infrared radiation is absorbed at these frequencies, and that's why they work as a greenhouse gas. But diatomic gases are not polar, okay, because the electronegativity of both the atoms is the same. They will not contribute to the greenhouse effect. Okay, and so this is the final part of the spectrum. There's a line emission spectrum, an absorption spectrum, and an infrared spectrum. This is caused by a glowing gas. It gives you brightly colored lines. An absorption spectrum is when the white light goes through the gas. Black lines will appear in the rainbow that comes out the other end. But an infrared spectrum is when bonds between the atoms vibrate and how much they vibrate depends on what kind of bond is there and what is the mass of the atom, okay? So emission is excited electrons falling down to the lower energy level. This one is the cold gas absorbs certain photons and then the photons have disappeared. They can't come out the other end, so you can't see them as light, okay? And you get that black line because black is an absence of light. And finally, in infrared, there are only certain photons that cause vibration and it will only work with polar molecules because there is a dipole moment.